I set up the Raspberry Jam because I heard about one that was happening in Cambridge and thought that's a long way away from here and not everyone will be able to get to one like that. So I thought I'll set one up nearby so people from, from Wales can come and have a look. So that's it. What do you think of the jam here? The jam is excellent. Um, obviously it's a little small scale compared to some. I, uh, I was going to go to the Cambridge jam last yeah. week, but unfortunately I couldn't yeah. make it. Uh, but uh, since we're in the middle of nowhere... We are actually on the edge of nowhere, I think you'll find. <laughs> <laughs> at the edge of nowhere, yeah. Then obviously uh, you've done very well yeah. to get uh, the uh, attendance you have. Excellent, thank you. This is a movie what uh, me and my brother did for Raspberry Pi. My name's Owen and this is Ben. And okay. Little Kit Kids, Little Pie Kids, basically. And you've done a film about the Raspberry Pi? Yeah. It's a horror film. Well, it's based on like a corny old yeah, black and white like film. All the old. Uh, I wanted to do it like an old corny like horror film. Black and <laughs> yeah, because I kind of like that theme and stuff. Cool. So what do you make of the Raspberry Jam so far? It's fun. Uh, it's good to get more people to see like my animations on yeah. my laptop. Have you had lots of interest? Lots of people come to talk to you? Yeah. Well, we've already had one interview with a person from Abrest with um, University as well. Um, our channel on YouTube has... Uh, um, well, nobody doesn't really comment that yes. much and nobody really subscribes. So what's your YouTube channel? Uh, it's Little called Kate Little Kate Kid. Kid. Little Kate Kid? Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll put this video on YouTube and tell everyone to comment on Little Kate Kid. Yeah. Uh, my name's Claire Griffiths, I run the Computing at Scotland hub in Northern Scotland, the only one in Scotland. And my parents have a place just up the road in Dinnis, and I was here on holiday and thought I would come and look at the Raspberry Pi jam over here. And the idea being that I could then do a similar sort of event where I am based in Northern Scotland. Excellent, excellent. So what do you think of the event so far? It's really exciting, it's lovely to see the children's enthusiasm and see them sharing the sort of things, the games that they've used, talking about the software they've used, um, how they've been able to share it with other people, and also to see them uh, have the adults in the room coming over to see what they've done, and equally the kids going to go and look at the robots and the other programming, so the whole sharing, Excellent. Side, collaborative side of it. Excellent, yeah. Excellent. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing with your Raspberry Pi. Right, so this is controlling a robot boat here. This is actually a boat we built a while ago with a different computer in called a Gumsticks. But essentially, a Raspberry Pi is the same as a Gumsticks but 10 times cheaper. So we're just connecting the serial port up to a microcontroller, which is a PIC down there. And that then connects to a compass up the front, a GPS in the back, your servo here, a servo there, and a wind sensor up into the sail. So we just send simple commands like the serial port, and we can control any of those things. And then the Raspberry Pi makes a decision on how to set the sails, to read the GPS in, read the compass in, and works out which way it needs to go. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So what do you think of the Raspberry Jam so far? It's very good. Excellent. It's nice to see this many people in mid-Wales with Raspberry Pi. This is going away at it. Yeah. So I use the tools I have. I mean, you could put it, because we're shell over that, yeah. and it would be a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's coming in this clamp yeah. yeah. That's just going yeah. yeah, they, they do that. Yeah. We nearly bought we nearly bought an air swimming fish uh, and it puts you in your balloon uh, and, and you can swim in this form in the air. So I'm involved with them. So can you make them so that they can send us when the bigger bigger robot. Here we have something that I made during my work experience. Um, I was given all the bits free. Hey. Um, and were you working for Dulles or Cat by any chance? Dulles, yes. okay. <laughs> um, and 
this is a 20 watt solar panel and looking at this today um, there's a little green LED there which shows you if it's charging or not hang on you should be able to see a green flash or something yeah okay and then very faint I'm not even going to try and get it on the camera um, is a light there which if I go into full yeah that's full green okay um, so that means that the battery is full yeah and this is this is a charge controller so yeah you've got the Raspberry Pi um, power would be coming out of those two yeah a battery would be plugged into those two and solar panel would be plugged into those two okay as is shown on the back so this is a, this is a portable Pi power plant is that that's portable Pi power station but okay portable Pi power Power plant sounds a lot better because that way you've got all peas and it's really hard to say. Portable pipe power plant, brilliant. Okay, so that's that bit's wired to the solar panel, and then you've got um, a 12 volt or 7 amp um, battery. Yeah. Which, um, if you think that the Raspberry Pi uses about 500 milliamps roughly, um, that gives you 14 hours of charge, but Raspberry Pi doesn't use 12 volts, so I had to use a transformer, um, which it goes from 12 volts. In this one, you can. I'm thinking of having it as 6 volt, and then having a couple of um, resistors in there to drop it down to 5 volts, which is what you want for the Pi. Um, and because it's halving the voltage, it's doubling the um, amp of the current so you've actually got 14 amp hours basically roughly um, and with the Raspberry Pi using um, an amp every two hours that's 28 hours of charge which means with this charging you've got perpetual power nice so that's perpetual power from the Pi portable power, pie, portable pie pie power plant cracking crack. brilliant Plan for the next version of these laser following rather than lines. Um, so the boys uh, in IT club, they came together and uh, they wanted to promote what they do in Raspberry Pi and also share, share good ideas of what they could do in the future. Um, so today it went up quite well where they saw um, how pr uh, programming, computing and everything comes together where uh, they can see for example robots, how they use Raspberry Pi to control robots and how they use Raspberry Pi with gaming and using open source software. So it's really good to, you know, uh, it's, it's a further education not only that but also the ICT in the actual real world rather than in the classroom. Yeah, so it's been yeah. a very good day. Yeah. So you're the ICT teacher here? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been here? Uh, two years now. Two years, yeah. cool. And uh, I mean, it's, it's lovely to see them as you know, just be able to uh, using what they've learnt in their own time. Um, and it's a shame that all this stuff is not in the curriculum. Yeah, but it should be. So I'm, I'm Tristan and I'm um, uh, working on a project called the Open Energy Monitor Project which is a project to develop open source energy monitoring tools and um, we are using the Pi as a base station in the energy monitoring system. Um, we've got a sensor unit here which is um, monitoring the, how much power is being used or how much power has been generated and that's transmitting wirelessly to a little um, a G Link. Uh, receiver here which then goes into the Pi and the Pi serves like a, a web page, it uses a, a piece of open source software that we've written called Ingmon CMS. So, make, so this is actually my the PV system at home. It's, uh, um, Sunny day in mid Wales. Yes. Eventually, I want to add vision to my Arduino robot, which you can't do with Arduino, so I'm going to have the Raspberry Pi on top and the Arduino controlling the motion and, and the basic sensors like the uh, sonar. Um, but before I do that, I've got to learn how to use the Raspberry Pi and, and get it all working. So I'm going to make a media center. Um, the main problem I'm having at the minute is with this powered hub, which 
it seems to die every so often. But I've got different parts. So I've got a USB 5.1 surround sound card so that I can use my fancy headphones. Uh, I've got a monitor, but it's fairly old and it only has VGA in, so I have to get an HDMI to VGA adapter, which is £25. So it's the same price as the Pi, but the alternative was to buy a new monitor. Um, but that works nicely. Uh, and I also have this, which is a wireless keyboard with a built-in Bluetooth uh, dongle. Oh, you've got a lot of toys there. Yeah, and it all fits nicely into these uh, proto-pick boxes, which uh, I ah. think will make fantastic makeshift cases. Excellent. isn't interest in um, in computing uh, at this level is for making the Raspberry Pi um, Pi stack cases. This is this is uh, called the Pi stack, and this is one of the top models. It's uh, got solid brass um, posts. It has chrome molybdenum. Get close up on that. It's got chrome molybdenum internal posts uh, supporting mm. the Pi. There is access all round for the ports and as you see it's made in 10 millimeter acrylic um, it's rugged um, and it's uh, suitable for all environments including schools and that is this place is known locally as Mac yeah but the pronunciation of the full name is something that he had a little bit of difficulty yes. with. So if we could do a quick yes. how to pronounce... Okay, it's Machenstein. Okay. So, because CH is and then LL is... So, it's Machenstein.